Hi, ladies and gentlemen, this is Ms. Koken. We're back in Chapter 6, learning about polygons and quadrilaterals, this time in Section 6.3. And we're going to look at parallelograms again, just like we did in Section 6-2. This time, we're going to be looking at it from the perspective of not only the opposite pairs of uh, parallel sides, but we're going to be looking at some other conditions for being a parallelogram. As always, we're going to start with a warm-up. And whoopsie. And what I'd like for you to do is pause the video now. Remember that in number one and number two, when you have to justify the statement, you're going to be using the relationships that we learned about earlier this year to answer those questions. So pause the video now and turn it back on when you're ready to check your answers. Okay, for number one, we can say that these are congruent to each other because of the reflexive property of congruence. And we learned about that earlier this year when we learned all about the properties of congruence. The two lines that are parallel, L and M, we can say because we know that we have congruent alternate interior angles and we had the converse of the alternate interior angle theorem that then said the conclusion was that we have parallel lines. For 3, 4, and 5, you needed to substitute in, and hopefully you were successful with those. If not, chances are it was a calculator error, so go back and take a look at your work. In this section, we want to be able to prove that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Now, we're not going to go heavy on the formal proofs, but we are going to be looking at the characteristics that make a parallelogram a parallelogram. So in order for us to do that, we need to take a look at the conditions for being a parallelogram. In the first theorem, it says if one pair of opposite sides of a quadrilateral are parallel and congruent, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So our conclusion is that it's a parallelogram if, in fact, we have a pair of opposite sides that also happen to be congruent. Now, in 6-3-2, we see if we have two pairs of opposite congruent sides, then we know that it's a parallelogram. So if the sides are congruent and opposite, we know that they're a par parallelogram. 6-3-3 tells us if we have two pairs of opposite angles that are congruent, then we can conclude we have a parallelogram. We've got two more, and these are 6-3-4. If an angle of a quadrilateral is supplementary to both of its consecutive angles, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. That means that two angles that are next to each other, like A and B, or like A and D, need to add up to 180. If they add up to 180, they're supplementary, and then we can conclude that we have a parallelogram. 6-3-5 has to do with the diagonals. If we have congruent diagonals, or I shouldn't say congruent diagonals, but the the diagonals actually bisect each other so that each half of a diagonal is congruent to the other half, then we know that we have a parallelogram. So in the examples that are coming, we're going to be using these different conditions to solve problems. For example one, you can see that we've got what is a quadrilateral. We want to be able to prove that it's a parallelogram when a is equal to 3 and b is equal to 9. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to notice that we have opposite sides that have expressions. And we're going to plug in the values that are given to us so we can find the length of JK, segment JK and the length of segment LM. If they turn out to be equal, then we know that we have one pair of congruent sides. So we plug in, and lo and behold, we do find out that they are congruent to each other. So that's one. Then we're going to do the same thing for B. And unfortunately, on this slide, we don't have the picture of the parallelogram, but we're going to plug in the value for B and find that two more opposite sides. So now we have two pairs of congruent opposite sides. That speaks to theorem 6-3-2, so we can conclude that this quadrilateral is a parallelogram. In example 1b, we have something similar, except instead of having expressions for the side lengths, we have expressions for the angle measurements. So we know there are two conditions associated with the angle measurements in a parallelogram. One is that consecutive sides have to be supplementary or add up to 180 degrees. 
The other one is we need two pairs of opposite angles being congruent for a parallelogram. So just like we did before, we're going to plug in the values that are given to us so that we can determine the, the measurement of angle Q and then we're going to want to compare that to angle S. They need to be congruent to each other. So when we plug in, we find that both are equal to 46 degrees. So we have part of one condition met. The next thing that we want to do is find angle R. When we plug in X, we can determine that angle R is 134 degrees. And you guessed it, the last step is we're going to determine if two consecutive angles are in fact supplementary. So we need to make sure that they add up to 180 degrees. If they do, then we've met the conditions and we can say that quadrilateral PQRS is a parallelogram. Stop the video now and work on the now you try problems and then turn it back on when you're done. We'll check them in class. So we'll go on to the next example as soon as you turn the video back on. Here we are in example two. We want to determine if the quadrilateral is a parallelogram and we need to justify our answer. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to look and see if we have two pairs of opposite congruent angles. We do have 107 and 107 degrees. Those we know are congruent and we have one <clears throat> in the other pair, 73 degrees. So what we need to figure out is if the missing angle is also equal to 73 degrees. And if it is, then we know we've met the condition for being a parallelogram. So the way that we find that out is we can either do 107 plus 73 to get 180, or we can say 360 minus the three angles that we have. That would also give us 73. And we know that we would have, we would be able to conclude that we have a parallelogram. On this example, we have two congruent angles, but we don't have any information on the other pair of angles. So sadly, we are not able to conclude that this is a parallelogram. It looks like one, but we can't prove it. We cannot justify, so we cannot make that conclusion. Quick reminder, the definition of a parallelogram is that it is made up of two pairs of opposite sides that are parallel to each other, two pairs. So that's the definition. And if you are going to prove by definition that a, parallel, that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, that's what you would have to demonstrate. We've got one example left before our real world example. So what we're going to do is start out with quadrilateral JKLM. We have the points. So we're going to plot those points and then we're going to determine, well, we're not going to plot those points. We're going to find the slopes and make sure that we have equivalent slopes for opposite sides. We could do it by plotting the points also and then calculating the slopes by counting. Either way will work, of course. But if we have two pairs of opposite segments that have the same slopes, we know that they're parallel. That's the definition of parallel lines. And we can conclude that our JKLM is a parallelogram. In example B, we're going to approach it from a slightly different direction. And what we're going to do is still calculate slopes, but we're only going to calculate the slope of one pair of opposite sides. So we're going to take a look at AB and CD, those opposite sides. We see that they have the same slope. So we know that we've got one pair of parallel opposite sides. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to be looking for the length of those slope of I'm sorry of those segments. So we're going to use the distance formula, everyone's very favorite, so that we can calculate the lengths of each one of those segments. When we see that we have congruent opposite sides that are parallel, we know that we have proved that ABCD is a parallelogram. We're almost ready to get started on our independent practice, but just a quick reminder. We have learned several ways to determine whether a quadrilateral is a parallelogram. And here is just a little summary of what we're looking for. So once you read through this, feel free to turn the video off. You're done and ready to start independent practice. See you back in section 6.4 when we will be looking at other types of quadrilaterals.